panelers. I'm Mark. And I am Rob. And this is going to be a little bit of a promo of what we're covering within the next two months, because we got two amazing shows that are coming out, and we love to talk about this. Right now, we have coming up September 29th, Gen V, which is the next iteration of The Boys. And the following week, October 6th, guess what comes out? Loki Season 2. So I'm kind of ramped up for this because we haven't had a little bit of the boys in us. We haven't seen Loki in a while. So Rob, Steve, Frank, our friend Kelly, Jason, a whole bunch of people are really Everybody's looking Everybody's going to be on. Everybody's, Everybody's going to be on. on. We're going to have fun with this. So uh, we're covering these shows episodically. They might be combined ventures. But keep that in mind, because when we do, they're going to be side by side images on Facebook, Instagram, whatever, so that you can leave your comments below. But first, we're going to move right along into Gen V. So, Rob, what were your thoughts of the Gen V promo that came out? So the promo, I'm going to be very honest with you. It seems like it's uh, uh, the Xavier School for uh, Mutants, except, you know, (laughs) in the uh, boys uh, universe. Okay. And then, of course, the one thing that I got out of it was because it's it's supposed to be a commercial. So it's a commercial for like, you know, in that world Mm -hmm. uh, that they're doing a commercial for this university to promote the university. And so everybody's, you know, like very gung ho about, you know, come and join us and, you know, and you're going to learn so much and all these things. But, you know, that these episodes are going to have so much things going on behind the scenes, you know. Yeah. And it's not going to be all happy go lucky. So that's what I look forward to is the uh, what I would say, the energy and what made the boys such a great show. Hopefully it translates to Gen V mm. and we get to see, you know, a lot of the of course, is I'm, I'm hoping that it's going to be rated R. I'm hoping this is not like a PG-13 thing. Oh, because, no. Yeah, <laughs> right. So but if it could be if it could do that, if it could actually be, you know, rated R, just like the boys and everything and kind of like the conniving things that are that were happening with the boys and all these things. Mm-hmm. I think this is going to be a very special show. Absolutely. Yeah, I look forward to it myself. I'm looking definitely into a lot of people that I love, especially the person that presents to the university as like a university for people who are especially gifted mr clancy brown himself who plays professor rich brinkenharf and oh my goodness i i love that you get the kurgan himself the kurgan himself yeah no absolutely <laughs> <laughs> so uh on top of that we're we're looking forward to other people jensen ackles has made some instagram posts of him saying you'll be seeing me soon there have been talks about Jeffrey D. Morgan making appearance, possibly other people that were involved within the boys itself. Now, mind you listeners, this was based off of a, it was like based off of like a trade paperback, which was called, uh, I'm, I'm forgetting, but all right. I didn't have this prepared, <laughs> but all right. Yeah, it basically is based off a of paperback from the boys. It's a volume four. So this is the next iteration or next generation. So they're actually doing these things within uh, the show. So they're taking people or kids that were injected with the uh, the V compound and obtain these powers. And literally, it's like a 90210 episode, I think. And them learning how to deal with their powers and social gatherings, right. as it you were. Know, it gave me that. It gave me that. It gave me that vibe. You're right. It gave me the whole uh, 90210 vibe. And hopefully, it's yeah. not in that direction. Or if it is, hopefully, it's going to be more of the rated, really rated R version with superpowers. Oh yes, <laughs> <So> <laughs> we already know. got that with the boys. So I'm assuming that we're getting the same treatment that we did with the boys with this so now you're looking at younger actors right and and portraying people are learning how to adapt and use their abilities or being trained to use their abilities who knows if it's for sexual preference or vicious preference who knows and we've already seen that the last season of the boys uh, when it came to sexual preference with uh, that one orgy 
thing. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that was but, a great episode, by the way. It, by the way, was. Just, just so you know, so this is actually based off the boys comic book story arc. It's called We Gotta Go Now. Yep. We and gotta that was go done now. by, right, that was done by Garth Ennis and uh, Derek Robinson. So, yeah. yeah, that should be very interesting. Yeah, I, I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to what we get to witness and to get to talk about. So uh, obviously, as always, Pamela's no holds barred. We're going to say what we feel and we're going to talk <laughs> about what we like, even if it's disgusting, perverse, who knows, whatever. We're going to have fun with it. Steve will be involved. Rob will be involved. I'll be there. Our friend Kelly, Jason, like Rob had said before, we're going to have a slew of people that will be jumping in on this and having fun discussing about Gen V, which is the new iteration of the boys until we get the actual boys season. What would be what four? Yeah, it would be season four. I'll be very interested because if yeah. uh, you were telling me that this is probably like a prequel or no, it's uh, it's after the boys uh, season four or Correct. is this going to be actually in parallel with season four? That's what I'm wondering. I'm curious too, because uh, I, you know, I'll admit it. I have not read the book. I do not know. So if right. you listeners out there, if you're keen on this and you have been reading, because I'm not the one who's been a reader, I have like a couple of the trades, the first two, but I've read them thoroughly in comparison and read them and compared it to the actual show. Doesn't really compare, <laughs> but uh, it's loosely based. I would loosely. say, you know, yeah, yeah, it's loosely based. As a matter of fact, this one they say is very loosely based that it's going to have a hunger. It's been inspired by the Hunger Games. Okay. And it's also a parody on Marvel Comics X Men. So I think that's going to be very interesting. I think there's a lot of sexuality and a lot of brutality that's going to happen <laughs> within this particular <laughs> show. So. Uh, hold on to your butts, everybody. Uh, we're in for a ride. And I think especially since it's a boy centric show, we're in for our ride. Absolutely. So, all right. And next up, would we're, we're going to be covering Loki season two. Now, this comes out October 6th. And just like I said before with Gen V, we're going to be covering it episodically. If both clash and gets to that point where we have to combine both, we'll tell you, hey. If you don't want to hear about Loki or Gen V, skip ahead or don't skip ahead. Right. Or just end it at the point when we stop uh, or start into the next episode. So uh, we're not sure exactly. We'll find out when we get to the point of recording and we'll let you know. But Loki season two, I'm geared up for this because it's been a while. We mm -hmm. got to see a lot more about Loki because in the promo, we got uh, Kihai Kwan, who we all remember as Short Round and in the Goonies. Right. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing him because he's like kind of like that like gadget guru for uh, the TVA. And he's there and supposedly uh, Mobius brings Loki there because he's out of time and Mobius doesn't have a clue as to who the hell he is. And he's trying to figure it out because apparently Loki mentions everything that had happened within a heartbeat to get him to where these logistics laboratories are. So, uh, and then trying to figure out why he's phasing in and out, phasing in and out. Right. And then we do get uh, to see a little bit more of Sylvie, which is the female version of Loki. And we get a McDonald's reference in it, too, from some of the uh, promos that we got. Supposedly, uh, they're doing a cross promotion, too, with not just Loki, but also with McDonald's because just product placement. Yeah, product placement. <laughs> uh, what did they do? Uh, I'm forgetting. Uh, what was the Disney movie where they had a Szechuan sauce? Oh, my God. Yes. Um, shoot. I'm I I, rem I recall that, but I don't recall the movie itself where all of a sudden the Szechuan sauce was going on eBay for like and 200, 300. Does. And it's like and people are paying for that. And I'm like, dude, you could just go get Szechuan sauce from the supermarket, man. Well, it's the, it was their own. And it was their own particular marketing brand I and, and own ingredient. And everybody was buying it in bulk. And then they were keeping on to it and they were <sighs> selling it online. They're doing the same thing. 
Right. So there's something going on with Loki with that. So those of you who are enthusiasts and you're going to go, go grab all you can. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'll have to see. But yeah, I think Loki, it's interesting because Loki was one of those few shows on Disney uh, Plus that was received very well compared to some of the other Marvel properties. And so I'm looking forward to see what they do with this. I, w- I was never big into the Kang character and i'm still not really big into it i i really think that that character should not have been what i will call the next avengers event i think that secret war should have been that but you know it's and i think kang should have just been a disney show but you know they're doing the reverse whatever but the one thing i look forward to which i thought was great from the first season yeah was the dynamic between loki and the character, I forgot what the Morbius, Mobius, Mobius, yeah, Mobius, right. So the character of Mobius, I love their dynamic. I love it the was way like Tango and Cash. It was a buddy cop type of thing, and exactly. And, and, and I'm looking forward to that part of it. Uh, I'm hoping, honestly, I really am hoping we don't see much of Kang, but I'm sure this is still going to be based off of the whole Kang thing. It's going to be more Kang centric. And by the way, uh, just to let you listeners know, we were talking about the movie Milan with the Szechuan sauce. So uh, they're going to do the same thing. They're going to do a cross marketing with uh, Loki season two, as well as McDonald's. So those you McDonald's fans who love McDonald's, you can go out there and buy this new sauce because you could see Mickey D's on Sylvie. <laughs> Because she's uh, actually working uh, at a McDonald's. <laughs> and, please and don't, don't feed don't feed the machine because that's all. I mean, come on, people out there, listen to me. <laughs> don't spend your money on the most stupid thing, which is a little <laughs> packet of sauce. That's the most dumbest thing I've ever seen. All right. I mean, enjoy oh. enjoy the show. If you want to go get McDonald's, great, but don't go crazy on that. That's just the most you're basically what you're doing is just giving your hard earned cash. To some numb nut in his home who did, who was lucky enough to go to McDonald's, buy a packet of sauce, and then sell it on eBay. <laughs> that is true. But you yeah. know what? It, I would just grab a few just for fun and leave them off to the side, knowing me they'll burst out of the heat. <laughs> <laughs> so you could, sell, you could sell them saying that they were, you know, casualties of war or something. <laughs> they were too excited, so they exploded. I don't know. Uh, but... Uh, the people to look forward to is not only uh, Tom Hiddleston as Loki, Sophia D. Martino as Sylvie. We got Jonathan Majors coming back as He Who Remains, L. Wilson as Mobius and Mobius, Tara Strong as Miss Minutes. And honestly, we get like some sort of Ghostbusters looking Miss Minutes coming out right. in one of the promos, which is really, really cool. Apparently, we get Ravona back, maybe classic Loki. Ki Huai Kwan, who actually plays Our Burrows. That's the name of the character he plays. Supposedly, Mark Ruffalo makes an appearance as Bruce Banner. Really? Uh, yep. He's going to be in it, too? Yeah, he's supposedly going to be in it. Uh, Eugene Cordero, who you would all know from Tacoma FD, and he plays the uh, Filipino or uh, actor that, that right. that's in there and Tacoma FD. Uh, he plays a character in there called Casey. Uh, we get B-15 from uh, One Me Masaku and uh, Jack Veal as uh, Kid Loki, as well as possibly Clark Gregg as Phil Coulson. Right. Wow. Frank Grillo as Crossbones. Wait, Coulson? Yes. Oh, Coulson. Wow. If they do bring him back, but mind you, this is from IMDb for okay. Loki season two. We could be lied to, but if we get Clark Gregg, I'll be happy. Okay. But, you know, because I just love the idea of Coulson, not from Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., from the actual original Avengers movies. But we're going to get a slew of different characters. Uh, we get Jasper Sitwell as well by Maximiliano Hernandez and uh, uh, Dubia Opry, who plays Boastful Loki, which we saw at one point last season as well. As well as Kelly Fleming as uh, young Sylvie. Right. But uh, whether or not we get these characters or not, because people like to throw in things on IMDb and they could be wrong. 
but we know the main characters are there and I'm looking forward to seeing all of them. As far as what we're going to get, my feeling is I'm sure they're going to move more into the Jonathan Majors, he who remains character. Right. And a character that we were, I would say what teased at from Ant-Man and the Wasp quantum mania at the very end. Right. With that, uh, that ending, that end credit scene where he saw oh, him in the yes. past. Yeah. We saw him like in a, uh, like in a theater or something like that. Correct. Back Correct. in like the thirties or forties. And okay. that's where you saw Loki and Mobius at the same right. time looking and he goes, that's him. So yeah, yeah we're going to get that story. Yeah, I think it's going to be very interesting, by the way. Also, uh, so post-production on this and visual effects are going to be done by the frame store, Industrial Light and Magic, of course. And there's actually like about six other ones. And then music is also going to be hmm. done by the same composer, Natalie Holt, who did the composition for the first season. So that's going to be done there. Yeah. And talking about marketing, McDonald's really like I just read really, really <laughs> just got into this. Yeah. They converted a McDonald's in Brooklyn to a 1982 theme as it appeared in this in the season starting on August 30th for three days. They did that. That was pretty crazy. It is crazy. So, yeah. So McDonald's like so into this. There are other products uh, placements in there. Mm-hmm. But McDonald's really the one probably taking McDonald's the one pretty uh, pretty much uh, forking over a lot of money. Yeah. The promotion <laughs> so, of it, too. Yeah. And and. and Honestly, it's kind of like back in the day when we had Batman Forever and we had those McDonald cups. Yeah, exactly. Uh, you know, uh, so, uh, yeah. yeah, no, absolutely. And principal photography actually began on June, 3rd, uh, June 13th in uh, 2022 at uh, Pinewood uh, Studio. So they're going back there again. And yeah, it's pretty Star cool. Wars I mean, was actually made too. Star Wars was made also there. So. Yeah, no, this is uh, I'm looking forward to this. I think this is actually going to be great. It's going to be fun, I think. Yeah. And uh, like I said, listeners will be episodically. So once a week. Right. Uh, it's either we're getting both Gen V and Loki at the same time. And, you know, we'll say, well, skip ahead if you don't want to hear this one or, yeah, it will. We, we might alternate. So we don't know until we start recording (laughs) so keep that in mind but we're looking forward to it and looking to have fun if you have any thoughts of the particular series and what you're looking forward to please go to our facebook group all you have to do is go to facebook.com forward slash panels to pixels if you want to send an email all you have to do is send that to panels to pixels one at gmail.com that's panels Two is spelled out T-O and then pixels and the number one at gmail.com. Just right. write out a regular texted email. Or if you want to just record yourself, do so and just send it as an attachment. We'll play it. <laughs> but other than that, uh, we'll see you on Facebook and Instagram. Instagram, remember, Panels to Pixels podcast. That's all you have to do. Awesome. And thanks to the one and only John Ham for liking our podcast presentation. <laughs> of good omens episode oh oh, good omens season two episodes five and six so we did the finale as a two-parter into one so thank you thank everybody for listening or thank everyone for listening geez listenings all right (laughs) uh i'm mark i'm rob (laughs) and this was panels of pixels podcast we'll talk to you guys later take it easy bye-bye